Hi guys and welcome back to another video where yet again we're going to be attempting to predict the scores and results of week 9 of the Premier League season 2017-2018. But before we get on to week 9, let's have a quick look how we got on in week 8. So as you can see, you actually came away with 10 points this weekend to my 6. You did, however, have three perfect scores, which was the yeah. Spurs, Bournemouth, um, Southampton, Newcastle, Leicester, West Brom. You had the perfect scores on those uh, fixtures. Whereas myself, I had six results, but overall I only had the six, you had the ten. So in total, you've now got 50 points and I've got 53. So you're mm -hmm. closing in on me and this week could see you go into the lead if you have a good week. Uh, looking at the comments section... And yet again, for the third week in a row, Ray M came out on top with a score of just five points. It was a difficult week um, in week eight. There weren't a lot of high scores. I don't think there was, you know, many people around the country, even yeah. on the likes of Sky Soccer 6 winning there, especially the likes of Manchester City winning 7-2, of course. But enough of that, let's crack on to week nine and predict some scores. Okay, first up, we have a Friday evening fixture, which is West Ham against Brighton. So how do you see this one going? Uh, they're 14th, 15th in the table, but Brighton have slightly dipped in form a bit now. And so, well, West Ham are starting to pick up form, but I just, you can't really say which way, which way this one's going to go this week. But it is at the London West Stadium. Ham, yeah, West Ham, Brighton. Really tough call, this one. I reckon it'll be 1-1. One, one. OK, um, well, both teams actually drew last yeah. week 1-1. One, one. Uh, West Ham, of course, away to Burnley, which was, a, you know, it was an OK result up there. Uh, Brighton yeah. earning a, a draw against Everton at home. OK, Rooney scored in that last minute, yeah. or in injury time, I think it was, with that penalty. So they actually got away with it a little bit there, Everton. Um, however, it is at the London Stadium... Andy Carroll is going to be out this week. Yep. He's suspended after those naughty elbows really came yeah. flying in. Okay, maybe the first one's a bit debatable. Second one was, uh, you know, he, he deserved what he got there, you could say. Um, but I can actually see West Ham running, well, not really running away with it, but I can see them coming away with a 1-0 victory. Maybe the Andy, maybe with Andy Carroll out of the side, the likes of Chikorito can knock in some goals for a change. Yeah, I agree. OK, moving on to the second fixture, we have Chelsea up against Watford. Watford on a fine run of form at the moment. I think they've, um, they've, they're have they undefeated in their last four games. Chelsea, of course, lost against Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace, as we know, haven't scored all season, but they actually go and defeat Chelsea. So they threw the form back, book right out the window. In this one, though, I think Chelsea, there's going to be a bit of a response. The manager, Conte, is he's going to be, you know... He, he, probably kicking down walls in that changing room after the match. I can actually see Chelsea picking up the points and winning. It's going to be close, and Watford are full of running and everything, and they get, they carry that threat going forward, but I can see actually Chelsea running away with this one 2-1 in the end. So Watford have had a great start to the season. They haven't lost in three matches, which is really good for a side like them. Four, four away matches. Four away as matches. Well, yeah. as they're really strong away this season, but... Chelsea, they've lost their last two matches. I don't even know what happened against Crystal Palace. Maybe because Morata's out and they started to stumble a bit. Possibly, or Ray Roy, I should say, is uh, shoring up yeah. Roy, yeah, shoring up that defence. Um, of course, I, I'm not sure how many. Absolutely all over the place. Yeah. yeah. But um, I can see this one being really close, to be honest. But uh, as in really close, I reckon it's going to be 1 0 Chelsea. Okay. Okay, so the next fixture is Stoke versus Bournemouth. Now, both teams haven't had the greatest starts of the season. Stoke have only won once in the last six games. Um, and Bournemouth, same same goes really. But Bournemouth just literally can't score this season. And they just let in too many goals in. So, and Stoke, they just, they're a bit weak at the back, to be honest. They're a bit, they're, they're a bit weak all over, but... Conceding seven goals last yeah. week against Manchester City. Of, yeah. but of course, Manchester City you know, devouring everybody at the yeah. moment. So, I reckon they won't be able to attack at all either side. So, I reckon it'll be nil nil. A, a boring nil nil draw. Yes. Okay, so Stoke against Bournemouth. I can actually see Stoke winning this match. They've won a couple of games at home this season. Um, 
Bournemouth, I don't think they've actually won a game away all season either. Stoke coming off the back of that 7-2 defeat against Manchester City. Mark Hughes, like Conte for Chelsea, it would probably be fuming. This is probably a game that they really should win. Yeah. Uh, the strength at you know at, at the stadium in Stoke, they, they should really pull this one yeah. out of the bag and I can actually see them winning this one 2-0. So Stoke 2, Bournemouth 0. We will. We'll see on yeah, Saturday. I don't. I just don't think so. Right. Okay. So next up, we've got Swansea City against Leicester. Now Swansea uh, last week they won. They beat Huddersfield two 0 which was a really good result for them. I heard it wasn't the best of the games. I haven't actually seen that match, no, but it wasn't, wasn't the best of games. No, it wasn't. Although Tammy Abraham knocked, you know, he, he knocked a couple of goals in there for a change. Um, Leicester drawing on Monday evening against West Brom. It was at home. You would have. Think, Jamie Vardy didn't get on the score sheet. They have got the pace in that attack. I think they will cancel each other out, these two teams, and I'm going for a 1-1 draw. Leicester continuing on their draw form. Mm -hmm. so it is at the liberty, so I think, you know, they will grind out that draw, uh, the, the, the Jacks. Well, I think this is going to be a really close match as well. Obviously, um, Craig Shakespeare got the sack yesterday. He did. So... Um, I don't know what position Leicester are going to be in at the moment. I reckon whoever um, whoever's going to be the caretaker manager for now until they find a permanent replacement. Um, you never oh, know. You can yeah. see. You can it's, see. It's you, a could, tough, you can it's actually. Tough one to call. You can actually see Leicester having a response yeah. when Ranieri went. You know they they did pick up their. Yeah. You know he did. They pick but, pick up the the points etc. But yeah. I can't see it against Swansea I can't, at, no, I can't. at the Liberty this weekend. I I can't see it, but. Um, it's really close one to call. I reckon it'll be 1-1 as well. 1-1 too. Okay, moving on to the next match where we head to St. James's Park where Newcastle are going to be playing Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace will be buoyant after that victory against Chelsea last week, of course. Mm -hmm. Newcastle, they drew away against Southampton, of course, last week in a 2 all draw. Uh, at home, though, I fancy Newcastle to just sneak this one. Maybe... Crystal Palace may be going a little bit too much confident. You know, they're still missing Benteke up front. Zaha's back now, but I, I think Newcastle will grind this one out. And I'm going for a 2-0, a 2-1, a sorry, a 2-1 home victory for the Magpies. Um, well, I've actually gone exactly the same. I think the Magpies are doing really well at the moment. Um, especially for a newly promoted side. They deserve, they, they really have, they really do deserve their place in the Premier League. They have, yeah, they have been really good, Crystal Palace. Picked up points against Chelsea, awful form. I just don't see, just don't think they're going to do it in the northeast. So Newcastle are going to be up for it. Two one, two one Newcastle. They've had a pretty good start to yeah. the season overall. You could say. Yeah, they're eight, they're ninth in the league. They've they hey, they're doing phenomenal, right, phenomenal. And of course, uh, Mike Ashley's just selling up as well. Yeah. He's looking for a buyer. So um, I think that's probably the yeah. fans are quite happy with that. Yeah, I believe or not, favourites to take over is actually Vince McMahon, which is a bit, um, <laughs> which won't happen. A WWE. Yeah, fan, I yeah. highly doubt it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, next up is Manchester City against Burnley. Now Burnley have made a fantastic start to the season, of course, um, particularly away from home, where they, you know, they've taken po yeah. points off the the big the big teams in the league. However, they are coming up against Manchester City team who are blowing teams away at the moment. Of course, they they thrashed Stoke 7-2 last week. They've been putting five past people, six past teams as well. They had a, an excellent or a good win against Napoli in the Champions League on, on Tuesday evening as well. Um, and I can see that form continuing with, and they're going to blow yeah. Burnley away. They're going to come up and stack a little bit here, Burnley. Mm -hmm. And I can see a 4-0 victory for Manchester City. Oh, okay. Well, um, Man City have been on really great form, to be honest. They're just absolutely demolishing teams. Um, Burnley really doing really well as well. Great away form. It's just Man City are just too strong at the moment. I reckon, like I said in my predictions of the Prem, like I said in my Premier League predictions, I reckon, uh, I reckon Man City are gonna win it, win it all. But um, yeah, two one against Napoli. Look really strong there as well. Um, but I reckon Man City are going to be a bit tired from that, so I reckon it'll be a 2 0 victory. 2 0. Of course, as well, we, we don't know what is Aguero going to play. Yeah. I think he's back, he was on the bench, I think, um, the other night. Whether he's going to play Jesus and Aguero in the same team, as, and when they've got that fine attacking midfield, I think maybe, you know, Pep, you don't know what he's going to do. Is he going to play a two up front, or is he just going to play the one? You know, it's, yeah. it's a good problem for him to have. Okay, the next fixture is Huddersfield v Man United. Now, 
Huddersfield have dipped in form a lot recently, ever since they had that really good start to the season. Um, Man United, just like Man City, they're demolishing teams. However, they are they have picked up a couple of draws because of Jose Park in the bus. So mm, it depends. It depends really, but I think Huddersfield are going to dip even further in form, keep on crawling down the table. So, yeah, Huddersfield are actually 12th at the moment, believe it or not. So I reckon it'll be 2-0 uh, Man United. I agree. I've actually gone for a 2-0 victory to Manchester United mm -hmm. as well. Huddersfield, OK, they had that good start to the season where they weren't conceding. However, they're coming up against Manchester United, a team who really didn't turn yeah. up against Liverpool, you could say. They went there, Josie Mourinho, he bought his, the biggest bus he had and just yeah. parked it in front of that goal. They could, have even went, they could have won that match really with Lukaku. He had a great chance. Liverpool were the better team, yeah. but um, they just didn't perform. <laughs> this week, however, I can see them just just grinding out a professional victory yeah. against Huddersfield. 2-0 standard. And 2 nil, yeah. And yes. Huddersfield slowly moving down that yeah, table. Like we did in 2013-14 mm -hmm. season. Yeah, so 2-0s uh, yeah. all around there. Okay, so the next match is Southampton versus West Brom at St Mary's. Now, both sides drew last time around, but uh, Southampton have the potential to be a great side, but Mauricio Pellegrino is doing a little bit of questionable selection, but uh, West Brom really hard to score against. I, it really depends who um, Pellegrino selects in this match, whether he puts um, Manolo Gabbiandini, who scored twice yeah, around last time. Goals. Yeah, or if he puts Shane Long up front, which is, which is one of the questionable decisions, which um, Southampton fans aren't too happy about. Um, it really depends, but I can only see this going to Southampton, so I reckon it'll be 1-0 Southampton. Okay, fair enough. Now, I've actually gone for a Southampton victory in this one. This is probably one of the hardest yeah. fixtures of the weekend to actually predict. Um, Southampton being at home, I, I'm just getting them to edge, yeah. edge West Brom in this one. It could go down to the last 10, 5 minutes of the game. Mm -hmm. But I can see Gabbiadini, maybe he can you know, continue yeah. his scoring form, getting two last week. Maybe he'll, he'll notch um, one or even get a brace this weekend as well. So 2-1 for me. Okay. okay, moving on to the next fixture, we've got Everton, the Toffees at home against Arsenal. Now, this is the ever real difficult <laughs> I know. match to predict. Everton... Will they turn up? Will they turn up? They, they went away to Brighton last week, only just scraped yeah. a draw in the end. Arsenal <laughs> losing away against Watford. Watford. They really should have won that match against Watford if, if you know, if you analyse yeah. their, their play. But they're... You know, they're like a China doll or a, a very fragile Fabergé egg at the moment. Yeah. Um, and they, they've got that soft spot in, in, in midfield. You know, they, they can't really take games by the scruff of their neck. They really need uh, Sanchez to, you know, pull it out of the bag or, yeah. or, or Zul. Um, so, in the end, I think Arsenal are actually yeah. going to come away with a victory in this one. I'm sticking my neck on the block with this one. Because of the dire form and what's going on at Everton at the moment with the way they're playing and everything, yeah. I can see a narrow, narrow 1-0 victory for the Gunners. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, well, Everton, are, are they going to turn up for this match? But, um, yeah, awful form. I thought they... Ronald Koeman, what happened? Like, you, you built such a great squad, it's just... It's, it might yeah, be this it's taking time working. to gel. Well... We're nine, we're nine matches in. It should have gelled by now, I reckon. Sometimes it can take a whole season. Uh, it should, but... it should take no less than six matches. Or I'd say, <laughs> personally, you are a hard task, man. Yeah, but um, Arsenal don't know what happened last time around with Watford. Um, Watford just phenomenal at the moment, but it's really hard to pick which way this fixture is going to go. Um, it could go down to the last like ninety point five minutes, but. I can only see Arsenal running away with this one. I, I can just see a 1-0 victory for them. That's all I can see happening. OK. And the final fixture of the weekend is at Wembley. And we've got Spurs or Tottenham Hotspur yeah. against Liverpool. Um, Liverpool, what can you say? 7-0. 7-0 the other yeah. evening. Against Manchester United, they looked the better team. However, they couldn't score. This weekend they are going to Wembley. It used to be their second home in the yeah. in the seventies and eighties. However, what Spurs they have got a good defence, you know, defensively sound. 
Yeah. There will be goals in this match. Um, I'm hoping that Harry Kane's actually going to get a goal this week. I, two games now without a goal from my fantasy team. I'd like to see him Same. score. I can actually see Spurs winning this one, a three-one in the end. Well, I certainly agree with you, but I reckon it'll be. Um, I reckon it'll be slightly close match because Liverpool absolutely going to be buzzing after that seven-nil um, victory, highest that any uh, British team has scored in the Champions League yeah, they, they were side. playing Maribor but yeah. any you know even the, the weak any teams club, yeah. do you know they don't really concede seven but their opposition weren't the best really, yeah so, so um, I reckon it'll be quite a close match but I reckon Tottenham will just win 2-1 to be honest it's yeah. difficult they're, they're playing Pretty at tough. Wembley they, they're not the best at Wembley yeah. teams have we said in the past and in previous videos, yeah. they do raise their game. Um, but however, in this fixture, I can yeah, I can only see two one Tottenham. They just I reckon Harry Kane goals. Um, Trippier, I can have another great game, and yeah, I, so. I wonder if Ben Davis will be back. He, I Fingers think he's, he's ill at the moment. He yeah. is in my fantasy team as well, or my squad. So uh, I'm keeping a close eye on yeah. on the uh, the Tottenham illness yeah. and injury uh, front this week. Um, but that, that's the end of the video guys um, thanks again for watching once again I'm going to leave a template of this weekend's fixtures in the description below if you copy and paste that into the comments section and make your predictions then you will get or the highest scorer of week 9 will get a shout out in the week 10 video just like Ray M has in the past 3 weeks make sure you knock him off that spot yeah. somebody else please <laughs> I'd like to give somebody else a shout out but for now it's been fun again this week guys but for now we'll bid you farewell and we'll see you in the next video cheers awesome.